think the history of particularly uh, the UN and its establishment was a noble idea. Um, unfortunately, it has appeared in the last decade, maybe just a little longer, um, that it's a tiger with no teeth, that uh, it can make policy, that it can um, establish mandates. But when it comes to getting into situations, particularly um, with armed conflict in other nations, it loses its perspective um, and decides again it's going to be a dominant power. Um, and that's a pity, really, because you know the United Nations was established in the hope that through discussion, debate, inclusiveness, it can actually do away with the necessity for war. And now it finds itself again as the world's policeman where it's, it shouldn't be there. Um, and in situations like Rwanda, Bosnia, um, it failed. And it failed miserably. Because again, you know, the mandate either was too limited when it was established, or it was just too afraid to have the guts to take something all the way. Um, yeah, the UN is particularly, I think, uh, a particularly good example of an idea gone wrong. And that's not saying it still hasn't got a role. I think it should go back and look at its original purpose. Go back and look at, uh, at the um, United, De United Nations Declaration of Independence, or uh, the United Nations um, Declaration on, on Human Rights, and see how it could pull back to actually meet the objectives set out in that declaration instead of actually being the excuse for. Uh, for breaches of, of human rights. Um, I think the International Monetary Fund, yeah, you know, I mean, the difficulty again is that, you know, there is so much wealth in the hands of so few people. And the ordinary people are made by people who are so removed from the reality of the consequences of their decisions um, that, uh, it's sort of built to fail. Um, I know again, I mean, it's, you know, because I've had some experience with some of the projects and programs internationally that have been funded by World Bank, and again, a great concept. So it has, but you know, <laughs> I think rather than use the dividend of money that actually has, you know, I don't believe that a lot of that money comes from ethical sources by the time it gets through the mechanism to get to a point where the World Bank are actually dealing with it. And again, you know, we talk about we talk about uh, poverty, we talk about starvation, and we talk about all those things. And uh, the World Bank, you know, uh, I suppose the great thing I would think would really, if the World Bank was a credit union, it would be good. Because the money would belong to the people who, you know, to, 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 there wouldn't be shareholders like multinational shareholders. Um, but that uh, you know money that could be distributed to meet need um, and actually ease the burden of suffering in, in, in countries, particularly countries in conflict. But there is money for the World Bank we being wisely spent in redevelopment programs and infrastructural programs um, and some of the DDR programs um, you know, there's World Bank money in there and it, and that's good. The thing is that again, it's almost like a poison chalice that's being handed out, you know. And I, I get the feeling that, you know, to take, to be a recipient um, of funding from the World Bank is almost, you know, it almost makes it seems like you're being bought in rather than being helped. And, you know, I think big global organizations and big global 
um, financial institutions are just so detached from the needs of people on the ground. Um, and it's that thing about bringing them what we're going to say they need because it's going to be good for us, rather than bringing them or funding projects um, in places that are actually good for people.